Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Rajat and today we will be discussing the question number of increasing paths in a grid. In this question we are given an m cross n integer matrix grid where we can move from any cell to any adjacent cell in all four directions. We need to return the number of strictly increasing path in the grid such that we can start from any cell and end at any cell. Since the number may be large we need to return the modulus of it. Now two paths are considered different if they do not have exactly the same sequence of visited cells. There are certain example given of the problem and the constraints of the problem. So let's first understand what the problem is all about and how we can solve it. So this is the sample example given to us. But this is a very small example to understand all the four directional movement that we can do in the problem. So let's take a bigger example and fill in with some random values. So what this question expect us to do? It expect us to choose a starting point and choose a ending point. And now we need to find if there exists a path between 1 and the cell 2 by following the condition that the sequence should be strictly increasing. Now from the point or the cell 1 we can move in all the four directions. So let's suppose we start off with computing is there any increasing path starting from 1 which will end at 2 or how many paths are there. So we can move to 1 and 3 in this case the two directions are outside the range of this particular array so we won't be doing that. As it is a strictly increasing sequence that we need we cannot move on to 1 as it is equals to the previous value. But since 3 is greater than 1, we will move on to this particular cell and perform the same operation again. Now, here we can see what we are effectively doing is a recursion. So let's keep that in mind. Now again at 3, what we are checking is in all the four directions, can we move? We can move in two of the four directions. One direction is outbound, one direction is to the previous element which is also less than 3. So that also doesn't satisfy the condition. So we won't move. The two fulfilling conditions are cell 4 and 7. So let's suppose we move to cell 4. In this cell, we again do the same operation. We try to find out whether in all of the four directions any value exists which is greater than this particular 4. And we'll keep on doing that. Now. We saw that we have chose a starting point and an end point. So the start point can remain the same and the end point can change to various cells in this particular array. And we need to return the answer for the whole array. So starting from 1, we need to find out if there exist and then count the number of those paths to all the other cells which follows the condition that is the sequence starting from 1 till the end position should be strictly increasing sequence. Now we talked about a defined starting point and a variable ending point. An end point can be same and the starting point can move. It means both the start point and the end points are dynamic over here. We need to find out whether each cell can reach any other cell using the condition that the sequence should be strictly increasing. So now let's see if there exists a path between 1 and 8. So how does a path is defined? A path from 1 to 8, first path we can see is 1, 5, 8. It's an increasing sequence. Does there exist any other path? Yes, there is. We can see that the another path is 1, 3, 4, 6, 8. It is also a strictly increasing sequence. So there are two paths starting from 1, ending at 8. So now that we have got a brief idea of how we need to find the path between two points and also we have got a clue that we will be performing a recursion over here. We'll keep that in mind and we'll now understand the example that was given to us. So this is a small example. Let's see how the result is computed. So in this particular example, we can see that it is a 2 cross 2 of array with values. Each value is in itself is an increasing array. So 1, 1, 3, 4. So this becomes an increasing subsequence of length 1. Now 
of length 2 there will be 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 and 3 comma 4 then uh, increasing subsequence can be 1 3 4 so we see that there are total of 8 subsequences that we can create out of this 2 cross 2 array with this particular values so the result that we need to return over here is 8 now we'll first try to code the simplest approach over here and then we can see how we can optimize it for larger inputs so we'll first define some global variables first is mod which is 10 raised to power 9 plus 7 now we'll also define the length of the grid as a global variable now we discussed that we need to compute the result for each and every cell so for that we need to iterate through every cell in this particular grid so we'll write a for loop for that this is a 2d array so there will be two for loops now we need to declare a variable which will hold the result for us for every cell whatever result that we are getting we need to add that over here we will call the function and we need to do a mod on the result and at the end we need to simply return the result now this function from this particular index i comma j we will need two indexes to locate a cell in a 2d array so we'll need i and j value we will need the grid as well so those are the parameters that we are defining so let's say we have a method we'll call that dfs because basically we will be performing a depth first search in this particular case we will be needing a grid like we discussed we'll need the two indexes in order to compare this value with the previous value we will take a previous parameter as well which will be initially minus one since all the values are positive the first index will have a previous value of minus one is what we are assuming so now let's define this dfs function name that as start index i start index j and a previous value now we need to define the boundary conditions for this so si if it is less than 0 or sj is less than 0 or si is greater than equals to m sj is greater than equals to n or the final condition wherein the value at this particular index si comma sj is less than or equals to the previous value in all these cases we know that we do not have any path and will directly return zero now since we have performed all the conditions all we need to do is call our function recursively on all four directions now this can be done in two ways i'll first write down in a longer way and then we can simplify that code as well so initially the path will be one for the same value and then we have dfs for so these are the four directions that we need to compute now we need to write all these dfs call again and again what we can simply do is we can define a 2d array called direction and this can hold the value like this now all we need to do is call this direction array over here we'll just copy this one line over here we'll say d of 0 and d of 1 and this will take care of the rest we need not to have these many lines so this completes the basic coding part wherein we are effectively just iterating over every cell and then finding out what all number of paths that exist starting from this particular cell to rest of the cells in this particular array following the strictly increasing constraint given with the problem now we'll try to run this let's see if run for the basic test cases so it is running for the basic test cases that's fine but 
if we see in the constraints we are seeing that m and n can go up to uh, 1000 so there will be a total of 10 raised to power 6 elements for every one possibility there are four possibilities that means we are doing 4 raised to power n at every level which will grow exponentially if the array size is greater so we are sure that we need to use some of the previous values now what do we mean by using the previous values so let's get back to our scratch board and see how the previous value will help us in this particular problem so at the end we saw that there lies two paths starting from one and ending at eight now let's take another example let's see if we are starting from the element five and we try to find out the number of cells or number of paths that exist starting from five we see that from five there are only two paths that we can take to seven and eight and from 7 and 8, there are no other paths that can be taken. So if we write those paths down, we have three paths that we can take starting from this element 5. It is 5, 5, 8 and 5, 7. So there are three paths. And let that be the result that we will be storing somewhere. So 3 is the result for this particular cell 5. Now suppose we come across cell 4 and we are now trying to find out what are the increasing subsequence that we can get starting from 4. So from 4, we can go to 5 as well as 6 only. So when we reach 5, we already have calculated the value 3. So we need not to go ahead and find out those values again, which will save us the computation. And hence, our time complexity will also decrease from this particular usage. Now this particular problem can use this technique of storing the intermediate result only because of the constraints given with the problem. The constraints are that the sequence should be strictly increasing. And the important word in this sentence is strictly. If it was only increasing, then one and one is also an increasing sequence. Then there is no chance that we can use the intermediate result. So now let's optimize this particular code and store some of the immediate values so that this particular solution of ours can work for larger inputs as well. So as we see that a grid of length this will have these many results so we can store all the results in an array which is of same length so it will also be m cross n now rather than passing that as an argument we'll just define this dp array as a global variable also initially be null and we'll remove this so initially an integer array will have all the values as zero so if anywhere the cell has value dp of si sj to be greater than 0 since this cannot be negative we can just directly return the value there is no point in computing it again now this value is basically what we are trying to find and we can store this value over here so this two lines will save us the computation and reduce the time complexity by using some of the extra space we are saving the time so now let's run this code so it is still successful. Let's submit this. So this got submitted successfully. The time complexity, we can see that we are going m cross n as we are using a dp array. We won't be recomputing any of the value or the cell. So it will always be m cross n. The space complexity in this case will also be m cross n because we are using a, a dp array which will store the intermediate results. That's all for today's video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Do let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.